Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Kanishka Gupta and let's have a look at the stories for the day. Tata Group is India's largest conglomerate. The $128 billion revenue group has 29 listed companies, over 60 unlisted and hundreds of subsidiaries spread across 10 verticals. It employs close to a million people. Just imagine how difficult managing such a group would be. That is why its chairperson N. Chandrasekharan wants consolidation. He has already engineered consolidation in five verticals. And recently, Tata Steel announced to merge seven of its subsidiaries with itself. The aim is to make bigger and more efficient companies. Our next segment tells more. The Tata Group's flagship steelmaker Tata Steel last week approved the merger of six subsidiaries and an associate company with itself in a major move that consolidates the group's metals and mining business. The move involves listed entities Tata Steel Long Products, the Tin Plate Company of India, Tata Metallics and TRF. The proposed amalgamation is aimed at driving synergies through raw material security, centralized procurement, optimization of inventories, reduced logistic costs and better facility utilization. The consolidation is in continuation with Tata Steel's drive to simplify the group holding structure. Since 2019, it has reduced 116 associated entities. Under the chairmanship of N. Chandrasekharan, the salt to software conglomerate has been consolidating businesses that share common synergies. Earlier this year, the group announced the merger of Tata Consumer Products and Tata Coffee. Tata Consumer itself was a result of the 2019 merger of the consumer products business of Tata Chemicals with Tata Global Beverages. A financial daily on Tuesday reported that the group and Singapore Airlines are working on merging their airline businesses Air India and Vistara and housing them under a new joint venture. Meanwhile, Tata-owned AirAsia India is in the process of being merged with Air India Express, an Air India subsidiary that operates flights mainly on the India Gulf routes. By 2025, Tata's aviation business will be reportedly brought under Air India. Tata Sons, the group holding company, had consolidated its various businesses across aerospace and defence sectors together under a single entity, Tata Aerospace and Defence. Mergers and demergers are part of the long-term growth plan and a value creation proposition. During growth phase, there is a necessity to create independent verticals to support the high growth opportunities. This also helps in building and creating new leadership teams, again with a hope to build value for shareholders overall. Similarly, in the maturity stage, it makes sense to bring in synergies and cost efficiencies to remain competitive and ahead of the market. The merger announcement of the metal companies in the Tata Group with Tata Steel is an example of this, and I believe this will be value accretive for the shareholders. On the other side, they continue to identify and nurture innovative ideas to build emerging businesses, which I believe in the longer run, the successful ones will eventually become large independent entities or get merged with other group companies. According to Financial Daily, Tata Sons has commenced plans to halve the number of listed companies in the conglomerate to an estimated 15 from 29 in the coming months. This is being done to focus on investing in bigger entities that can compete in the marketplace. The news report quoted the conglomerate's executives as saying that it is speeding up the simplification to focus better on the growth and scale of the large companies. Chandrasekharan, who is serving his second term as Tata Sons chairman, restructured the group into 10 verticals such as infrastructure, financial services, automotive, and technology and e-commerce. The group had committed over $10 billion to deleverage and restructure Tata companies, consolidate cross holdings, acquire strategic assets, and infuse capital for future growth. Chandrasekharan is driving his 3S philosophy of simplify, synergize, and scale to take the group to new heights. Simplification includes consolidating entities sharing the same sector into a single vertical and reducing subsidiary or exiting non core businesses to bring focus and agility. An example of synergy would be Tata Motors leading the effort to develop an EV ecosystem in partnership with Tata Capital for financing and Tata Power for the charging infrastructure network. The group now is largely focusing on home markets 
as its strategy of going global has not yielded much returns. It's a very well thought out strategy which had been conceptualized a few years ago and is now been put on a fast track of implementation the cross functional advantage of competent people who were working in different silos in different companies will now be available to the entire tata steel uh, company uh, my personal belief is that this will be highly accretive and lead to enhancement of the value of tata steel from 100 plus companies if you're down to 40 50 and of which maybe uh, 10 or 12 are listed then you will have a massive value creation signals for good capital allocation arise from multiple sources now all these signals can become much stronger and far clearer if you have a clean segment wise consolidated results to look at and i must say that the capital allocation strategies that mr Chand- uh, chandra has uh, put in place have been remarkable they have uh, it's taken tremendously bold decisions it's cut off a lot of the very poorly performing global enterprises there was no sentiment around it what needed to go just went uh, and good deal of consolidation happened and now i think he's taking this a step forward creating the right synergistic uh, capital allocation template tata's latest ambitious goal is to harness its presence across multiple sectors into a unified offering for consumers through its super app tata new it will be interesting to see how the consolidation exercise aids in this goal Super app Tata New is all set for a revamp, and by Diwali, Titan will also come on board. Meanwhile, nip is in the air, and festival season is drawing close, and it is raining offers. Both the online and offline sellers are offering heavy discounts in hope of making up for the loss of previous years. So, what does it mean for buyers and sellers? Let's find out. The festival season is here. Retailers both offline and online have rolled out carpet discounts on all categories of items from electronics to fashion to appliances. In a festive season without COVID restrictions after 2 years, consumer demand has shot up despite the soaring inflation. The festival sale which started on September 23 is expected to be month long and last till Diwali. Ahead of festival season, retail businesses across India have reported a moderate growth of 15% in sales in August 2022 as compared to the pre-pandemic levels of 2019, according to a survey by Retailers Association of India. The trend captured during this period suggests that most items were hit by inflation. While higher priced items reported good growth driven by upper middle and elite class, sales of lower priced items were not that impressive. On what the early signs are looking like for the offline retail segment, Kumar Rajagopalan from Retailers Association of India tells us more. So if you have to take the indications from what's happening online and also what we are seeing offline, uh it's it's quite encouraging. many of our retailers brands are doing both they are they are available online they are also available offline uh, the pricing also is getting matched for most of the big brands some of the smaller brands and only d2c brands may have a different strategy as far as pricing is concerned but uh, similarly there are brands that are only available offline so again their strategy is different uh, but the early signs are very encouraging because customers do want to go out they want to shop they want to ensure that they get this feeling of cheer around them it's now that whole family is going friends are going also we are seeing a good trend of not only shopping for themselves but also there's a whole lot of inquiries around gifting answer for this offline rate 
sales are definitely doing well this season it's expected to do even better than what it did even in 2019 pre pandemic once the sales season kicked in both online and offline retailers doled out steep discounts in order to woo consumers the discounts are also coupled with big cashbacks and other offers internet marketplaces have run a marketing blitzkrieg hired additional workforce and rolled out other swaps including a partial waiver of seller fee in the online segment red sea consulting expects the internet e-commerce companies to clock a 28% year on year growth in sales at nearly 12 billion dollars during the sale month in covid hit 2020 and 2021 e-commerce companies clocked overall sales of 7.5 billion dollars and 9.2 billion dollars respectively Amazon and Flipkart accounted for 90% of overall festival sales in 2021. The bumper sales in the festival month this year are expected to push the online retail gross merchandise value to $68 billion in 2022, up 3% from last year. Another survey found that 83% of consumers are willing to shop this festival season with a strong sentiment for fashion and electronic appliances. The early signs are encouraging and are in line with the forecast. The first 4 days of the festival sales saw the overall daily average gross merchandise value, which is the total value of items sold in a given period, rise to 5.4 times when compared with the business as usual days for the overall online retail, according to a report from the Red Sea. The business as usual days are non-sale days. The growth is driven mainly by fashion and mobiles. Mobile phones have seen a 10 time jump in terms of daily average GMV and an estimated 50 to 55 million shoppers made purchases in the first 4 days according to a report from the Red Sea. Meanwhile, fashion including apparel and footwear saw a jump of 4 times in daily average GMV from BAU days. The fashion segment was muted in the last 2 years due to the pandemic. Overall, the first 4 days of the festival sale have been better than that of last year. It stood at 3.4 billion dollars, making up for 60% of the projections. Last year, it stood at 4.8 billion dollars. The first week of sales is expected to reach 5.4 billion dollars. Most of the demand is also coming from non-metros and tier 2 and 3 cities. According to Unicommerce, over 60% sales for Amazon Fashion came from tier 2 and 3 cities in the first 2 days. Misho said 85% of its first day sales came from tier 2 cities and beyond according to red sea the tier 2 plus growth wave is driven by reverse migration digital adoption and value offers post covid so what is driving this retail buying frenzy online let us listen to sanjay kothari of red sea consulting an analyst who tracks this sector closely so i think uh, what explains the uh, better than expected uh, first four days at least is, uh, is is a couple of things right last two years i think people have not been celebrating diwali or celebrating the festive season as such there was a hangover of covid uh, people um, you know were still very uh, cautious in terms of getting out etc so this year at least uh, from the consumer sentiments that uh, uh, that we have been able to look at uh, the, people are coming out people are uh, expanding you can also see the customer sentiment the consumer sentiment uh, improving over the last couple of months so uh, clear takeaways is uh, people are celebrating this diwali uh, last two three years were dull because of covid because of uh, lower disposable income etc so a uh, clear indication of people wanting to spend on certain high ticket items people wanting to splurge on mobiles people wanting to splurge on certain large electronics and also you know trying their best to look good during this festive season so you see uh, fashion driving growth you see uh, products like bpc uh, you know personal care items doing well the first part of the festival month is off to a good start and analysts expect the trend to continue going forward clearly it points to the first signs of consumers having moved on from the pandemic scars
Retail sales may be encouraging, but investors are not cheering. The sharp reversal in the interest rate regime by global central banks, coupled with multi-year high inflation, has eroded returns from equities, government securities, gold and cryptocurrencies this year. As the geopolitical situation remains tense, where should an investor with a surplus investable amount put their money? Our next report takes a deep dive. The year 2022 has, so far, disappointed investors. Be it equities, gold, cryptocurrencies or debt instruments, returns have been flat to negative this year. It is driven by fears that advanced economies may see a hard landing because of a sharper than anticipated rate hike cycle, energy crisis in Europe and faltering economic growth in China. Even for the remaining part of the calendar year 2022, the investment outlook remains challenging with the Russia-Ukraine conflict intensifying and the US and China locking horns over Taiwan. So should investors take risk at the moment and invest their surplus money in any asset class? Or is it time to stay on the sidelines and let the dust settle? Analysts suggest the time is right to start investing in equities in a calibrated manner. Investors should not get a panic and move away from the equity. In fact, this is a time to have a little more uh, tilt towards equity. You know, since 2008-9, uh, I've been saying that the global pain is India's gain. What I mean is that the oil price is the single most important factor for Indian markets to dictate the trend. So this time also oil price is down 32% as I am speaking now. From $128, it has come down to $85. This alone is going to lift India's economy and market sentiment in terms of, uh, you know, arresting the forex reserves, arresting the rupee fall, correcting the inflation. So a lot of good things would happen. So therefore, I would suggest that, you know, you have at least 40-50% of your uh, you know, wealth, which can be invested, which is in the monetary form, in the equity uh, minimum, around 30% in the fixed income, uh, remaining 20%, uh, maybe, you know, uh, gold. Uh, certainly, uh, from today, one can expect a minimum 15 to 25% return from the equity. That is largely from the small and mid caps. While analysts do caution that Indian equities will not fly against the wind, they expect them to outperform their global peers. Across various asset classes, analysts see equities giving up to 25% returns one year from now. Fixed deposits and government bonds, meanwhile, may generate around 6-7% to returns, while gold may remain flat. Bitcoin is expected to remain volatile, with one-year return expectation ranging from minus 3% to 34%. Given this, Arpita Vinay of Centrum Wealth says investors can turn overweight on equities from neutral in a calibrated manner. They may invest across domestic growth-oriented ideas, steady compounders and contemporary portfolio ideas via mutual funds and PMS or AIF strategies. In the fixed income category, she says, investors can invest in passive roll-down funds and ETFs in the mark-to-market portfolio, while high-quality fixed deposits select credit funds and select market-linked debentures can be looked at on the non-MTM side. On Wednesday, the Reserve Bank of India will commence its three-day monetary policy meeting. This, along with other global queues and the expiry of futures and options contracts for the September series on Thursday, is likely to keep the markets choppy and impact trading sentiment today. About 11 million kilometers away from our earthly worries, an asteroid which was cruising gently in the edge of space was suddenly hit by a NASA spacecraft early Tuesday morning. But wait, it wasn't an accident, but a planned mission by the American Space Agency, which called it the world's first planetary defense technology demonstration. Our next segment has more on it. The last time a big asteroid crossed the path with the Earth was about 66 million years ago. The impact was so devastating that it wiped out 70% of plants and several species, including the mighty dinosaurs. Although chances of an asteroid that big hitting the Earth again in near future are bleak, scientists don't rule it out completely. And the likelihood of smaller asteroids coming in Earth's way are much more. 
they can easily wipe out a big city or even a state if not a country. So to avert such a collision, NASA had been working to develop the capability to nudge an incoming asteroid to change its course. In the last seven years, the American Space Agency spent around $330 million on the mission named Double Asteroid Redirection Test or DART. NASA, which has an annual budget of above $23 billion, wanted to see if the spacecraft's impact can change the trajectory of an asteroid. The DART spacecraft was launched in November 2021 by a SpaceX rocket. Traveling at a speed of 24,000 km per hour, the 570 kg spacecraft took almost 10 months to reach the target, an asteroid named Dimorphos. Dimorphos is about 170 meters in diameter and orbits a parent asteroid five times larger, called Didymus, which is 10 km long. Both the asteroids don't pose a threat to Earth. Oh my goodness! Eight, yeah. seven, oh, six, wow. five, four, three, two, one! Oh my gosh! Oh wow! We're getting visual confirmation. The NASA vehicle crashed into Dimorphos at a blistering speed of around 4 miles per second. Mission Control at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratories in Maryland announced the successful impact. DART's onboard camera live-streamed second-by-second -second images to the Earth till it went blank due to the collision with the asteroid. Was the mission a success? Well, for that we will have to wait a little longer. Telescope observations of the asteroid, whether it changed its trajectory or not, will start arriving a month later. But NASA officials have hailed the immediate outcome. They said that the spacecraft has done its work. I'm backed by the nation's trusted bank, SBI. To every Indian. NASA tracks over 27,500 known near-Earth asteroids and Dimorphos was one of them. That is all for today. For more news, use and analysis, please log into business-standard.com. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.